Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Today I wanted to talk about doubles. It's not something I talk about a lot. Reason being, I don't have a huge amount of experience playing doubles. I played some tournaments here and there, some matches, some practice, but not much looking at um, my overall tennis career or tennis life, whatever you want to call it. But I played the other day with uh, three very good players locally here. They've all played Davis Cup tennis, Davis Cup doubles especially, and one of them is Mark, who is a double specialist, plays on the ITF Seniors Tour, a very solid serve, good volleys. One of them is Matthew, who you've seen in other videos I've done, I usually hit with him once a week, uh, one of the top players in Malta, and the other guy is Bradley, who is uh, in the middle of the pack in age-wise, Matthew is the youngest. Uh, who um, used to play Davis Cup regularly, used to play on, on the top level here in Malta, but two kids later he, uh, he took a break from tennis and now he's back playing well, made a racket switch and so on. Talking about the rackets, which I think you're curious about, Mark with the serve and the volley game mainly, pretty flat ground stroke, strokes, uses the Wilson Pro Staff RF97 autograph, I think strong with Laxman Olu Power. A pretty standard setup for a player who has a big serve and likes to attack at the net. He prefers the serve and volley tactic and he's, he's very tricky to, to play against because um, it's not very common these days. Matthew, he plays with a lot of top spin, a lot of whip on the ball, good movement. He has the Pure Arrow VS as his racket. Strings it with Solinko strings usually. Now he's trying Hyper G. Usually plays with uh, Solinko Torbite and Diamond Rough. And um, yeah, he's testing a few different string setups now. Might add some weight to his racket as well. Brad has just done the, the transition to uh, ESO 98, Yonix ESO 98. He used to play with the Wilson Pro Staff 97, version 13. Couldn't quite get the, the pop and the easy whip that he wants. He has a very big forehand, so definitely he wants the, the racket to come through the air as quickly as possible so he can generate maximum pace on that wing. And now he's very happy with the E-Zone that he strings with Polytor Pro. 1.25 gauge. Those are the players I joined. I play with the Vcore Pro 97H for this most of this session. And uh, yeah, these players are all better than me, especially at doubles. I learned a lot from playing with them about, you know, getting the strategy right, how important it is to really communicate with your partner when you play a little bit of a higher level doubles. Uh, it, it becomes apparent like that this is a different sport. You need to approach it differently. I prefer singles and will do that because I like the more physical aspect of singles. I like always being able to blame myself if there are any issues. And especially being the weaker link in doubles can be quite rough mentally. You're, if you're missing important shots or, or you're just not as good as the other players, it can be quite tough. No matter how you know, uplifting they are or how supportive they are, it can still be quite rough. And, and I felt a bit, bit like that in this session. I was serving well, but the rest of my game wasn't really uh, on par there. So um, I did struggle, and, but I learned a lot. Uh, we did try some tactics, we tried some finger uh, gestures and always talking before every point. I really like that strategical approach. It makes it more interesting. I think we all enjoyed the session. Uh, although I didn't play well, I thought it was fun to play doubles for a change and I hope to play more and, and be able to improve at some point because I felt like uh, I didn't do myself 100% justice in this session. You always want to blame the racket, right? That's what I always want to do. Uh, and I, there's not much I can blame the V-Core Pro 97H on when I play singles. I absolutely r love this racket. It's very nice. Yes, it can get hot, heavy in the second set when you're getting in a tight match, but uh, overall I've been enjoying it for uh, you know heavy attacking tennis, hitting flat, taking the ball early. But in doubles, I felt like it was a bit slow to maneuver on returns, especially. I, I couldn't really get my timing. Maybe it's something I need to work on a bit more. Timing to just block back the returns. And around the net, uh, when you're you know, moving a lot, a lot around the net post, I, I, find, I found, found it a bit heavy and a bit difficult to maneuver. Otherwise, it's a racket I really enjoy, uh, but it does get sluggish and I generally prefer lighter, stiffer rackets for doubles. The, as you can see in my The Best Rackets for Doubles video that's on this channel, check that out if you're curious. I definitely play better doubles if I play with something that's a bit more forgiving, that's a little bit easier to whip around and move around the net. You need to be on your toes when you play doubles. You need to always move, keep your feet active. That's one of the things I didn't do and I, I don't really do well and doubles. something I need to work on is to be really read the game, be ready, poach, you know, see where the ball is going 
and uh, and I'm not I sometimes get stuck and I'm not moving well and that bothers me so it's something I need to improve I think the best way to improve is to play a lot of doubles and uh, you can do a lot of specific doubles training you just need to play doubles that's mainly the thing you need to do and I, I don't do that enough doubles really amplifies how important serves and returns are I was very happy with my serve especially with the vcore pro 97h it hits a very heavy serve but when it came to returns i was slow i didn't you know place my returns well it was often easy prey obviously you have less room for your returns when you play doubles you need to go cross court and uh, you need to think about what you're doing you can't just you know try to get a return in and then it goes straight to the opponent and he hits it in for an easy volley so you have to be much more aware of what you're doing which is good training it's really good training it's something i've under underestimated uh, but you should because i i prefer getting more and more physical movement out of it but that's maybe because i'm not playing enough doubles on a higher level so maybe that's what i need to do I need to work on my game and, and improve but uh, yeah i'm still gonna prefer singles uh, always but i need to improve my doubles because it's fun when it's when it's like high paced and and you're really working on tactics trying to outmaneuver and outsmart the other the other team work on your serves work on your turns stay active be kind and encouraging to your partner the guys i play with were really kind and encouraging although i was not playing uh, my best tennis or far from it i was i was not feeling it especially on returns and some forehands i was late uh, but they were always encouraging and it made it more fun and, and less you know stressful to be the weaker link where you feel like you're you're a little bit you know what's holding your team back that's a that's a rough spot in any sport and and i i really felt it the other day right so you need to be able to take uh, you know these mistakes that you're gonna make on the chin and be able to you know move on for the next point and uh, and it's always tough you you can definitely let your partner down and you can feel a bit bit tough to do that but that's the part of doubles and you just need to stay positive pump each other up and keep keep playing be encouraging that's very important i would also say that it's important to trust your partner even if you're playing with someone who's weaker than you give them uh, some shots to play try to trust them to do uh, certain shots that you might feel like you're gonna do better uh, I, I did feel i got some trust in my match but it's important and sometimes uh, when there's very you know uneven teams or someone is much better than the the partner it might be that they they take 80 percent of the shots and uh, that's pretty common but sometimes it's also nice to be able to to give some trust to your partner even if it's missing or you he she's missing uh, but still like you should really trust your partner in doubles it's important to have good chemistry good communication you will play better doubles so important you choose a partner you actually like and enjoy playing with and then you have perhaps strengths that complement each other i think that will do uh, will give you much better doubles results overall there are obviously countless of strategies for doubles which we can get into more uh, as i'm playing more and i'm studying the game more uh, always a keen student uh, those are some basic tips that I've, I've figured out with my limited play uh, but I, I'm really keen on getting, you know, understanding the game more and being a bit more uh, engaged with it when I play. Uh, hopefully we can get back to some more, you know, doubles tournaments in Malta. It's been a bit COVID unfriendly for doubles, which is a shame, but you can do practice sessions, of course, and stuff and practice matches like this one. We did play uh, two sets and a match tie break. We, we swap partners for each set. Uh, which is good because you can feel different partners feel different strategies try to get the communication going and so on uh, so a very good lesson i had a lot of fun doing it i didn't burn quite as many calories as i do when i play singles but it's something i need to improve and sometimes you have to you know do these things in life that feel like it's not going to be my best showing and you feel a bit uncomfortable but you have to just you know take it on try to improve try to learn be humble and and, and move on and I, I really learned a lot this session i need to dive a bit deeper into doubles i would like to play it more uh, it does really help you in the ways that you you need to place your serve smarter if your partner is gonna you know move to the other side with whatever strategy you you uh, want to work on uh, it's good that you can you know place the serve so you can optimize your strategy so being able to place your serve with some decent pace be pretty confident on double on second serves you don't want double faults that's gonna break bring you down even more in doubles than it does in singles so uh, be be aware of that work on your serve i really need to work on my returns especially on the backhand side it was pretty clear early on that they targeted my weaker backhand and i couldn't find my even a, a, a nice slice return i was just missing way too much and they became easy prey uh, which is something good players will notice quickly and pounce on no matter if it's doubles or singles so i do have some work 
on my one-handed backhand returns and and uh, there are some players that really focus on that with one-handed backhands I've seen Tsitsipas many times just stand there with his father and work on on you know one-handed backhand returns just being able to flow and and be able to confidently hit the ball with the single-handed backhand it's not always easy it's a, it's a little bit more natural with, with two hands on the backhand and uh, so it's something uh, we single-handed players definitely need to practice it's not the easiest shot to make a, a single-handed backhand return where you can actually get some depth on the ball and some action so i, I did struggle and there's something I, I write it down and i will try to work on it along with reviews and, and whatnot so those are my doubles learnings i hope you enjoyed it some highlights from the match I actually recorded a lot more but my iphone overheated and, and didn't all get in there so uh, that's a shame i need to look into my recording setup i need to have more space because sometimes i completely run out of space and i need to take a bit more of a professional approach there maybe have two cameras one for a different angle and to uh, to get a bit more content uh, i know some of you have asked for for kind of complete match and complete points tie breaks or not and i'll definitely do some of that in the future because i know i, I know you've been keen on it and it, it's it's fun to do like a complete set or something if you're up for it i'll, I'll do it for sure uh, but then i need like to make sure that my my camera can withstand the heat because the heat has been very 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 strong and also have some memory space so it's gonna if it goes you know beyond the hour you, you definitely need some extra memory well that's all i hope you found this interesting if you play doubles what are your thoughts about doubles what are the things you work on please put them in the comments below if you want to support tennis nerd please join patreon patreon.com slash tennis nerd where i publish unique content every week another way to support is to purchase something through my links on tennis warehouse tennis warehouse europe or tennis only i get a small commission if you purchase through that through those links at no cost to you i'm going to sweden now and uh, we'll hang out there for a week so you might see some different content with some different backgrounds it might be fun to switch it up and uh, i might see rain for the first time in uh, three months that will be interesting too We'll talk soon, have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.